Hi guys, Squall here. Welcome to another episode of Transport Fever 2. It's been a few days since the last one. Sorry about that. Christmas is a busy, busy time. Speaking of busy, look at this platform. Oh my god. This is, uh, this is a problem. We're going to have to do something about this, and I don't know if we're going to get around to it in this episode or not, but just be aware that we have a crazy amount of passengers wanting to go to Twickenham, and at Twickenham, we also have a crazy amount of passengers wanting to go down to Ludgershaw West, and at Ludgershaw West, we have a crazy amount of people wanting to go back to Twickenham. Now, many episodes ago, you may remember a discussion that we had about how to move passengers around by train and whether you should have point to point shuttles lots of little shuttles or whether you should have a long route that kind of runs the length and stops along the way and there's pros and cons in each there's no you know there's no right way of doing it you have to respond to what the map says the demand is in our particular case we've got the henley park henley um to hide pax run which you can see is making all these stops here it starts off at at Hyde, goes to Twickenham, Ludgersall, down to Henley, then back up to Ludgersall, Twickenham, and Hyde. The problem is, uh, oh, and it also stops at the airport. The problem is that you can see there's a huge amount of demand to move from Twickenham down to Ludgersall and back again. And the rest of the line is doesn't have that demand. Like down at Henley, there's not anywhere near that much demand. Up at Hyde, there's nowhere near that much demand. So this train line is inefficient now because it's trying to just do too much it's trying to move people along this line and frankly most people just want to move between well here here and the airport so demand is there so really what we should have in this instance is a train line going from the airport to twickenham to ludgers hall and back again just shuttling between those three things high capacity trains and then a small shuttle between hard and twickenham and a small shuttle between henley and ludgers hall but I did this basically many episodes ago because some people in the comments were saying it should always be done this way. And the fact is, no, there is no one size fits all here. You have to look at what the, the map's demanding of you. And it will depend on how the cities are growing, what your bus connections are like to those train stations, etc. Like, Anyway, I don't think we're going to solve that in this one. This episode is going to be about solving the final um, cargo delivery, if you like the final cargo demand in it amongst all of our towns namely uh, looking down this list here we are now delivering <clears throat> both types of goods to every single city except one Ludgersall Ludgersall machines is not getting any machines uh, and we're going to solve that in this episode I've done a bit of prep work so that we can get going quickly here and I'll explain what's going on now I'm not saying that all of these are being fulfilled well they're not you can see in many cases they're not even getting 50% of what they need, and this one's not even getting 30% what it needs. There is more work to do. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I did say to you um, when we started this series off that we will get all the goods. Well, I actually didn't say at the start, did I? I said we're going to get to a billion dollars. We did that. <laughs> what I said later on was we're going to get, deliver all the goods to all the cities, and we're about to finish that particular uh, promise. Now, Ludgers All is here, and it demands machines. Um, if you click on suppliers, you can see who makes machines. Uh, there aren't many. There's one down here, uh, down at Henley, so that's not far away. There's a Hyde's machine factory up here. We'll come back to that in a second. There's Twickenham, which is just outside of Twickenham, funnily enough, not far away again. And then there's Lee, which is over here, over at Lee, which is across the river there. Aylsham, tucked down in the corner, which we're already using. And then Biggleswade. Uh, up here in Biggles Wade, which we're already using to make machines. So we already have a couple of factories making machines. Now, the problem is that all the machines always need steel. Uh, they need steel plus something else. Sometimes it can be planks. Uh, sometimes I think it's silver bars, if I remember. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Yes, there you go. That one's silver bars, I think. Yes. There aren't many... There aren't many silver bar makers on the map and they're not that many silver ore. there is some silver down here but we'd have to take it to somewhere that turned it into silver bars and brought it back again at this stage of the game as i've said before you are going to start struggling at the start of the game it's easy pickings to get things um particularly mid game you've got the money and getting stuff is easy you're not already using it at this point you've got train lines roads you're using stuff 
all across your network, it's hard to find connections. Um, I have found a connection. I'm going to talk you through the solution. Um, there, it turns out that up in this corner here, and you may be thinking, why the heck, if you're trying to go to Ludges, or why don't you just take that one nearby, or this one over here? Um, where was it gone? Um, over here somewhere. I've lost it. Never mind. Uh, why don't you take it from there? And the fact is, because of raw materials, really, is what's dictating my decision. Raw materials, because it needs steel, it needs ore and coal. And funnily enough, there's a steel factory right next to this machine factory, which got me thinking, hmm. Now, those of you who are observant will remember this did not exist in the last episode, nor was this that long. I've actually gone in and cut this out and made a rather cunning little um, dockyard, which I'm not sure will work or not, if I'm honest. But what I've done is I've put a, a dock building at each end. There was one in the middle. We could get rid of that. I'll leave it. Um, we have put one at each end, which means we've now got a dockyard that straddles both of these. It's connected to both of these machine factories and steel mill. Now, what I don't know, and we're going to find out in this episode, is if we bring in iron ore and coal into here and it makes machines, will the machines get dumped onto the uh, dock platform, which then has access to this factory? Therefore, can the machine... Can the machine factory draw steel from the steel mill via this platform? I suspect not. I suspect the game won't just won't do it. I could be wrong, because I think what it needs is it needs some kind of line connection between the two. And the line connection won't exist. So it, this will not know if it drops things here that it will take them. I don't think it's that clever. So then the question becomes, what do we do? How do we get stuff from here to here? Well, we could just truck it. Um, we could try creating a shipping line that went to here and back and just move things because that way it would go, oh, I can take things to here and back to there. You know, or we could just try. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Anyway, so where are we getting coal and ore from? Let's start with that. Coal is going to come from here. So I've built a nice little dock here. So we've got two lots of coal. Fantastic. That will be more than enough to supply all the machines we need. So we're going to bring the coal in. We're going to ship it into there and drop it off. Iron ore is a little bit trickier. Um, iron ore, again, is something that we're using around the map in many places. We're using it here. Uh, we're using it here. We had one down here that had that we was using for this at that point, but it never actually got used. So I've repurposed this. What I've done is I've put a truck station right outside of it, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. I've also built a train station and reconfigured the line that was just track going through here. So I've put a station here. The reason I put a station here is because I want to directly tap that, that iron ore mine. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll bring the iron ore along this track. And again, I've just built this out a little bit. We're going to go straight through on our brand new track here, which is going to take it all the way into this slightly extended train station. Yeah. So this bit here is completely new. It's just a, a train line that bridges over everything. The idea is that the iron ore will be brought to here and then shipped over there, right? It will be dropped off at this station here, well, at this factory here, and then it will that same ship will pick up machines and bring them back to the shipyard here, which will then dump them on that train station. That train station, a separate train, will bring the machines all the way through here and go to Ludgersall down here. So the idea of... Um, this station here is that we're going to basically be dropping, we're going to be taking ore and dropping off machines. It'll have to be two different trains because the consist is different. We, we could split it, but we need a lot of ore and we won't get that many machines back because you need two ore to make one steel and one steel to make one machine. So you're only ever going to get 50% of the machines back for the given ore that you send, right? Uh, so we need to link that in shortly um, because I've got another platform to build here, I think. The reason I've then extended this road down to here, to this dockyard, is because over the way here, over the water, there is another ore that we're not using yet. And so what I've done is I've cut this section out here, built another dockyard, and connected it to the iron ore. And what that means is, and I've built another road off there in case we ever want to bring things here, that this, I just thought, while I'm building this dockyard, why not just build a road that connects to, um, to Lee, just in case we ever want to bring goods in here later or ship goods out. 
it's a future thing. I'm not planning to use it right now. But the, the iron ore will be shipped across the way. There'll just be a shuttle ship. And then trucks will move that ore to here, which will then be taken off along with this one. We'll start off with one, but we've got access to two. Future proofing, see? It's all good. Right, now, having made the steel and then worked out how to get it to this factory, we then need planks. Uh, where are the planks coming from? Well, that's that's a kind of an interesting one. We have a plank factory here, uh, which is currently being completely tapped out. So there's no chance of us being able to use that. And looking around the map, it starts to get a little bit trickier uh, as to where we're going to get planks from. But I did spot a another plank factory somewhere. I just need to go and find it. Hang on. Okay, I found it. And do you remember I said to you, I wasn't going to use this initially. That was a bit of a fib. That was a porky pie, because now I remember I do. I did all this prep on a different day to recording, so I just forgot. <laughs> what <laughs> what I did was I connected this road down here and tunneled through to this city, because I noticed there was a log, um, what do you call it, sawmill, which is sat in the middle of Lee. It's not ideal, because the kind of, you know, the houses are built up around it, but, you know, six to be then. Uh, I, I put a truck station right next to it, and all I need to do is supply it with planks. Sorry, supply it with logs, and we can make planks, and we bring the planks to here. So then those ships can take planks and ore across the way here, and then that shipyard can basically take ore and planks to here, and then those things can basically ship the planks to that dockyard and drop them off. Yeah? And the, do and the planks will supplement what that thing's already doing, so it will feed into the supply chain. And in fact, the ships moving backwards and forwards here with planks will start to draw on this as well. So the game will balance the demand on this along with the planks that we're bringing in in order to feed it into that existing plank demand along with this plank demand, if that makes sense. So where are we getting the logs from? Well, just outside of Lee, there is in fact a forest, Lee Forest, and another one here, Romsey Forest. And you can see I've already put the truck stations ready. Uh, so the truck stations are all set up. They're going to basically bring, uh, they're going to truck in the logs. I've, I've built some road network here. You can see they're going to kind of wind the way through here uh, and drop them off here. So, you know, it's going to going to roughly go in a, in a circuit like that. It's quite a long way. A lot of traffic to fight through. Uh, but as long as we ensure they don't interfere with these, these bus, this bus network, which if we're clever about it, they won't. They'll just loop straight back. But I think we might need to upgrade... A road. I just noticed that. There's upgrade a road just here, I think, if possible. No, nope, we can't upgrade it, so we're gonna have to delete that road. Because we need a way back that doesn't go the way of the tram. Um, because there is a tram route going. We have to do this, I'm afraid. It does upend a few things, but um it doesn't matter. It's better. We don't want to go that way because there's a tram route. So the trucks will have to come in this way, drop off, and then go back out that way if, make, if that makes sense. So I've put a waypoint here so we can just loop them around that bit. They will then come down this road here, waypointed there, you see, and then out this way. That way they don't interfere with the tram, trams and buses. So that's the plan. Logs to planks, planks to the shipyard, pick up the ore and the planks, ship them over here, Two lots of trucks probably going to have to bring planks and ore across there. Um, one train for the ore, one train to take planks and bring back machines. I think, I'm hoping, but I can't actually remember if machines, let's see, machines go in a box car, planks go in a flat car. That's frustrating. What we'll have to do, uh, well, because planks to machines I think is one to one let me just double check that yes planks to machines is one to one so we've already done the two to one conversion back here with the logs yeah so we'll, what we'll do is I'll have a train that's half planks half machines it will take planks and bring back machines 50% consist uh, it'll only ever be half full it's either that or of separate separate trains but I think we'll get better frequency if you do it 50-50 I don't often do 50-50 but I think this is the case where we'll do it so that's the plan, right? Now let's do it. Let's make it happen. Okay, I've defined a coal run. We're just going to use the, fir the first coal one. We've got this coal line here, Worthing Coal. Let's bring in the coal just from this coal mine here to this port, which will drop it off in there. 
Uh, I've just defined a uh, Lugisol ore line, which goes from Lugisol Station, where it can directly pick up this ore for now. We'll just take the one initially. Uh, that train just left. I've gone with the BR, uh, the electric train, the BR-185. It's about two and a half million or something a year to run with all the cars, like literally 320 meters. Uh, when it gets down to Lugisol, we'll just tell it to wait for a full load uh, for no more than 60 seconds. It's quite a long run. Uh, so that's going to bring iron ore to here. Now we need to move the iron ore to here and also bring the machines back. So we need a line for that. So we'll define this as... Uh, what's this place called? Um, one second. We go from here. At a station to here. Like that. Just give that a reddish colour so we can see it. Uh, so that's going to go from Hyde to Worthing. So this will be um, Hyde, Worthing, and this is going to be, um, wait a second, this is going to take, it could take ore, it could take planks, and it could take machines. It's like all of them, can't it? Ore, planks, machines. So the planks that are being dropped off here, it can take over. It can also take the ore over and it can bring machines back. So it's quite multi-purpose. But in order for that to work, we need to make sure that we have, and we won't tell it to wait, just take whatever's there and just keep shuttling. We need, in order to make that work, we need to tell it, we need to have a ship which has multiple compartments. And this is where those ships have a big advantage over trains uh, in that regard. They can take anything as long as they have a compartment for it. So for example, the Merlin has four compartments, so it can take ore, coal and planks or sorry all planks and machines no problem because it only because it has four whereas say something like the earlier earlier ones like this the vandal two compartments so it could only ever take two lots of things uh, it's just something to be aware of now this is going to be a shuttle so we kind of want it to have good cargo capacity but if we go with the the virgo virgo tobo it will only have two compartments which is a bit of a problem same with the Hercules. So if you want the bigger capacity, we've only got two compartments. May or may not be a problem because there's going to be more ore than there are planks and machines. But if you want maximum versatility, you would take this, the Merlin. Can't do as much, but can take all the compartments in the world. We'll, we'll start with this and we'll see what we need. It depends on the capacity that, of the line. Uh, we'll have like three just running through for now. But again, we may have to replace those. Okay, so that should set up the run for the ore. Now what we'll do, we'll start the planks going. Uh, so we need to get the logs from here and here to here, and then the planks over to here, and then the planks shipped to here, and then trucked over to here, and then picked up and taken that way. <laughs> so that's quite a bit of setting up, so I'll just quickly get on with that, and then we'll pick it up after I set the lines up. Right, so I've done the logs. They're, they're hopefully making the planks. I'm just setting up the, uh, the ship transfer now between here and here, Let's just make sure we get some good platforms out of that. Yeah, that looks perfect, doesn't it? Uh, so we'll have that moving. That's got, I've put it as ore planks because it's going to take the ore from here and the planks coming out of the uh, the plank factory. You can see it's drawing the logs through there now. The trucks are just on the way out, so that's going to take some time uh, for those trucks to get out there. But when they do, they'll start making planks here and the planks will flow. This will pick up the ore and the planks, so we need two compartments. So in this instance, what we could do is we could go straight in with something like this, two compartments worth. Um, it depends what you feel, uh, you know, in terms of bang per buck, that kind of thing. It's a higher capacity, runs slightly slower than the Merlin, but you only need two compartments. So, mm, arguments to be had, in, you know, in both cases. It can take ore and planks, so there's no problem with that. This can take anything. So, we'll just, we'll, we'll stick a couple of them on there. And uh, we'll set that up for the nice bit of color. And then we'll set that up for all planks like that. And what we'll do is, when we just get down to Mitchell Dean South, we'll just have it wait um, perhaps like, I don't know, 60 seconds just to try and get some stuff. This should start producing all soon, but it won't realize there's an onward connection yet because what we still need to do is define this thing here. It's quite a network. This, this, is, this is, you know, end game stuff now where you're multi-hopping goods across instead of it just being point to point as it quite often is in the early days it becomes a multi-drop scenario and that's what you know we're starting to see now 
There's a depot down there, so we've got that. So this is going to be uh, trucks. This is going to be... Where's that from? That's from here to... Oops, gone off to Ludgersall to the school lane. Interesting name, school lane. Um, pink, maybe... I don't know, like that kind of color. Something we can see, that's fine. Uh, now, when it gets down to Ludgersall branch, there really isn't that much point in taking stuff going unless there's stuff to take right um, the tricky one with this is that we've got two kinds of goods coming in we've got planks and we've got ore and they're very different kinds of trucks but we can use generic rather than specialized trucks and that way they can move both kinds of things um, there are trucks that can take planks and trucks that can take ore that can have higher capacity but we're going to have to sacrifice that because that's not going to work in this instance so what we'll do is we'll fire up that thing Again, though, it's it's all considerations. Like, if I chose that, which can take planks, it can't take ore. If I chose that, it can take ore, but it can't take planks. So I'm forced into taking these kind of things and all cargo. Uh, but if you make a mistake, if you don't think about this stuff... Um, I've not actually given that a good name yet, have I? Uh, let's just wait now to... Uh, I don't know. Ludger... Ludger Shawl... I hate that name. Ludger Shawl or Planks. There we go. If you didn't think about it, you put the wrong kind of truck here and you'd be wondering why your ore or your planks are not getting across your network. And it's all because you chose the wrong vehicle. Um, same with the ships. That that can majorly catch new players out. The ship thing with the compartments. They don't understand what it means, compartments. Never really explained in the game. Doesn't really have a good Wikipedia built in or anything. Um, right. Now then, we've got a lot of ore going on here got one train running there there he is I believe that's him no that's not him where is he on the network it's gotta be one of these is that you yeah they'll just all off. right so huge capacity um right now we need to move so that's going to move the ore we now need to move the planks so we're going to need a specialized train for that uh we're going to need to go to a slightly different platform as well so the moment we're using this platform, we're going to use the other one now. So that's Ludgershall Ore. Now we need uh, Ludgershall... Wait a second, we've already got... Yeah, there we go. Ludgershall Ore Planks. This is... There's, there's the truck for it, above it. And then this is the train for it, right here. So we'll make this one a different colour. Uh, we can't really use purple. We kind of overused it here. So what we'll do is we'll drop down to like a dark green, I think. And then we'll add that to that, and we'll add that to here. Um, now this, if I remember correctly, what we said was we're going to take... This is wrong. We're going to take um, planks on the outbound and machines on the way back, yeah? The other train is moving the ore, but this one, if we put the right compartments in there, we'll split 50-50. Because this is not a two-to-one, whereas this is a one-to-one. -one. That's two-to-one. You need more ore to make a machine. You need two ore to make a machine, if you think about it. Because two ore goes into a steel, steel goes into a machine. But with planks, you need one plank to make one machine. So we're going to split this one in its terms of its consist. Now, when it gets to Ludgershall here, um, do we want it to wait? Not really. Because there might be machines at the other end. We don't want to faff around waiting too long. It might not hurt to just sit here, say, 30 seconds, just to space the line out, and the same when it gets to the other side. You know, that's not a, a terrible thing, because multiple trains will then spread themselves properly. Uh, but don't want to make it, make it too long. That's going to go there, and then it's going to share that line, which is absolutely fine. We'll just check what platform it's using at this end. Okay, so you can see it's splitting onto a different platform. Beautiful. Right, the train that we're going to use... We're going to stick with the electric, the BR-185, and in terms of consist, we're going to need to move planks with this thing, and then we're going to need to move machines with this thing. So we kind of want to split it half and half. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's try that, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's too long, so we'll get rid of one of those and one of those. One of those, one of those. That brings us to 301 meters, which is under our 320, um, which is fine. That's that's more than enough. Uh, what's the capacity of that? 20. Capacity of that is 20. So they're both the same. 
uh, because this is one to one. So when the when the line's up and running, that should work okay. We can't add one more of each because we'll go over the the maximum limit of 320 meters for our particular platform. Now the line color is dark green, so we'll just color that with a dark green, and we'll kick that off. Now that's almost the line complete. I'm just going to speed things up now, but not quite because we've not we're not fully solved this transfer of steel. If you remember, we're still waiting for stuff to come in. Uh, but you can see that Ludger Shawl is the primary ore giver. This one here. But stuff is starting to be allocated from Mitchell Dean, yeah? Because the line is now realized, or the game's realized, that the, the ore can also come across this way and they'll be transported that way. Those trucks are just merrily waiting for a ship to turn up. Ships take time, as we know, but things will start to pad out as, as we wait. Um, but it's realizing that stuff is coming in. Unfortunately, we can't really see properly yet who the consumer is. However, this is where it's starting to get interesting because... It's identified Mitchell Dean as a consumer of steel, right? You know, which was never part of the plan, was it? That was never part of the plan. But the game has realized that it can cunningly start to move steel across our network. And the same with Biggles Wade. Biggles Wade, there's a train line that runs from here to here. And it's realized it can ship steel there. So it's starting to manufacture, but sending it to the wrong place. What we actually wanted to do is send it to here, but I don't think it will. And, and once, as I've said before, we can't see <clears throat> we can't see numbers appearing here um, because it doesn't it doesn't show it yet. Although actually, we've got ore and coal, so it would show it. Um, it's not allocating to hide. I am not surprised by this. Uh, we need to get this allocating from uh, hide. Now, funnily enough, it's starting to pull steel from <laughs> Mitchell Dean. <laughs> So Mitchell Dean is now supplying steel to here, even though we didn't intend that either, right? So this is where the network gets very, very hilarious. You can stop this. You can put filters on your lines and stop this from happening. But why not just let the game balance it out? What we need to do, though, is get steel from here to here. That's absolutely got to happen because this is, there's not enough capacity everywhere along the network to drive this. Uh, so we need to link these two. The question is, how do we want to link them? Do we want to link them with trucks? Or do we want to link them with ships or something else equally hilarious? Now, we could start banging in here with a cargo harbour. I reckon it would work. Um, I reckon we could move things um, point to point between those two. We'd have to flatten this land here and just have a ship moving between here and here. However, I think it would be a bit silly and, more importantly, horrendously expensive to run a ship over such a small distance. I don't think it would make any money. So we're going to have to be sensible um, and basically use the road network. So I'll just flatten this road back here a little bit. Give ourselves some room. Now, at this side, it can be a drop-off, but over here, it's got to be a pickup. Um, and this is where the road network's not doing us any favours uh, because it's a bit hilly. Um, now, can we upgrade that? Not really. So what we might have to do is we'll just delete this road that the game gave to us free which we're not going to use I wish I could shift delete and just delete the whole section between junctions that would be so nice please devs give us that please devs um, let's put in a road I'm hoping this will catch yes it will that will catch that so we'll use that instead we'll then just flatten this out here and we'll have our pickup point you know just up here that should allow us to delete that now However, if we do, it'll disconnect from here. You'd have to pause it. Alternatively, because we're not now upgrading that, my hope is we can just upgrade the section, and we can. So we can just upgrade that if you want to. Well, the game's now decided to autosave. This is going to be a drop-off point, so what we're going to do over here is just have a new section of, of road, perhaps. We have to play the guessing game about where the connections are. There we go. So we'll do it like that, and then we'll branch out like that, and we'll just run it past here, because why not? And then run it through to, I don't know, we could just come in here somewhere. It really doesn't matter at this point at all. We start like that. We can 
just do it like this. There we go. Tell the game what we need. Smooth that out. Make it look nice. We're going to need a truck depot here, and we're going to need a pickup point there. So all we need now is a building, uh, one platform. It's got to buffer the materials. It's frustrating that we have to do this. It's such a short journey, but, you know, in real life, still can't just teleport, can it? So... You just think, though, that we could drop it on the platform and pick it up automatically. I wish I could just define something between those things uh, because it is such a short distance. Um, but no doubt you could probably find ways of exploiting that to your advantage. Uh, right. Okay, it's a straight network. We'll have that come in like that. And we'll have that go there. Like that and then all we need now is a depot so that we can spawn things what a lovely junction that is um right so now we just need to define the steel we need a drop off point so anything around here will do and then we're just going to go trucks um I'll just put steel for now because I can't remember the name of these stations. It's going to go from there to there. So Worthing, we'll make it blue. I always use blue for steel. I don't know why, but blue steel. Right. Um, Worthing, steel. We'll call it a shuttle because it is quite literally picking things up from here and dropping it there. And we will use a vehicle like that. I reckon half a dozen to start with. Nice blue color. Worthing Steel Shuttle, off it goes. Right. Now, having defined that line, my hope is that Hide Machines will appear as a uh, consumer on this network, Hide Machines Factory. It'll start to apportion things to here as well as the other places uh, that it's starting to nick stuff uh, or send it on its way because we really need this factory to come online. If this factory doesn't come online, we're not going to make machines. And if we're not making machines, we're not doing our job are we the whole line's going to break down now this is where we could if you want to start to filter things so that these factories don't get steel like if we absolutely want all of it to go there we'll have to start filtering things um, to prevent it from from happening but we'll see we'll let the network kick off uh, it's got no or at the moment we'll let the network kick off we'll just go and quickly review what's going on and see if everything is ticking along um, as we expect it to so we've got logs coming out of here. It's still on 1% at the moment. When you when you put two logs into one place or two anythings into one place, it tends to favor one over the other initially. I don't really know why the game does that, but what you'll find is that it looks like this one's being sacrificed. This one is probably going to level up before that one ever will. That's just the way the game seems to roll. Um, however, the main thing is, are they getting enough logs? And the answer is, no, not nearly enough logs. Not by a, not by a long shot. Um, so we will need to probably double those on that line. And because I'll probably forget if I don't do it now, we'll double the ones on the other line. They'll run at a loss for a while, but, you know, 30 billion in the bank. I don't think we care about things that much. Early game, you have to be very, very selective about what you do in hard mode. Um, we're starting to see ore appear and planks. The ore consumer is worthing steel, which is what we want. And the ships should start to come in. They'll lose money initially as well, but they're going to move the planks to here. Uh, we're just to make sure that these things are doing the job. What have you got? You've got nothing at the moment. Did he just unload nothing? I think he did. Plastic. Okay. Yeah, that, oh, that moves the plastic there, doesn't it? Uh, so the ore, again, I think this one will probably level up before the other one. Logisol ore, we might have to consider making a second train at some point, but initially the one train should be okay. It's still going to... Actually, it's making money. That's interesting. I thought it'd be running at a loss already, but it's not. Uh, and the other train, which moves the planks and the machines, will definitely make a loss for a while, wherever he's gone. Um, there he is, I think. He's going to make a horrendous loss initially. There's nothing for him to do. More importantly, though, we need to make sure this kicks off. Um, 
the moment is still not getting any steel. And that's not allocating any steel, so that's a slight concern. But yeah, we just need to get ore to this guy. Right, we'll just... What I'll do now is I'll just let it run for a bit. It's June 2067. Uh, this will take time to establish, so I want to show you what happens when it gets up and running. So, well, for that, I'm going to have to wait. Um, we can see there's a lot of coal down here, so these boys are not really, not really coping, are they? Let's chuck another couple in there, just to get the frequency on that ore up. But if you've got all that coal coming in, the ore's got much further to come, so we need to up the ante on the ore. But frankly, until that demand kicks off properly, um, that's not really going to happen. That's definitely connected there. That's definitely connected there. Just making sure, because it's not putting things here, and that's, that's a concern. But we'll see. Once it starts to get some more ore shortly, maybe things will change. There we go. Some ore coming in now. Let's see what it does. Hopefully, I, I, I wish just... There you go, it's doing it. I wish just one thing the devs would change is tell me that factory knows where it's going to allocate things, but it never shows it until it starts manufacturing products. So if you've got zero here, it might already have decided it's going to put send things there. Just, just highlight it. Just highlight it as a destination, even if you've not got any numbers yet. Just tell me what you're doing. I have no visibility on where you're sending that. But only two. That's not a lot, is it? That's not a lot at all. Mitchell Dean Goods is getting a lot of stuff. Okay, let's give it some time. We'll pick it up shortly and see how we're getting on. So I was sat here watching things for a couple of months in the game, and then I just realized what a massive mistake I just made. I didn't actually define the drop-off point for the machines. So right now, there's no demand from the machines factory. It's, it's got nowhere to send its stuff. Duh. So yeah, we're bringing machines to here, or we have the capability of bringing machines here, but we're not actually dropping any machines off. So that's a great spot. So let's, let's solve that one. Um, if we build a truck on load stop. Now looking at the map, it would seem Ludgershaw machines are kind of centered around here. So we're going to want somewhere that's not on an existing bus route or a truck route. You can see there's quite a few of those kicking around. One of these side roads might be a decent option. Um, although, yeah, you just it will reach most of the most of them. It won't reach these ones down here. Actually, maybe there some more if we can sort it out. Yeah, somewhere around here. But we we just want to make sure we don't interfere with this network. If we come in that way and drop off that way and get out, we might be might get away with it. Somewhere around here might do it. Maybe like there. Be a good good way of doing it. Now, if we drop it off here, how are we getting stuff from there? Well, there's a direct route through here. So what we could do is take the opportunity to make a slightly fatter road through there. And then onward connect it, perhaps, like that. That would do it. So let's have a look what it looks like if we do that. So this is going to be trucks not just show, um, machines this is our final endpoint destination so the machines you can be purplish color why not you can go from here to here um, that's not a bad route actually by all accounts it's picked a, a good platform but the most important thing is it's on the opposite side of the road to that bus stop dropping off and getting out of there um, so I'm reasonably happy with that as it as it goes. Um, might just upgrade that just to make sure. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do that. I know it's going to get rid of a few buildings initially, but they'll come back. The most important thing, though, the problem we'll have in Ludgershall is it's kind of hemmed in. So as we grow the machine start part of this, it's probably going to go here. Um, and that's going to be a delivery issue. The other thing we could think about doing is building a road underneath and allowing the city to expand this side of the station. It's a little bit hemmed in by our station right now. Um, so we might have to look at doing that. But before we forget, let's grab some vehicles and get this stuff dropped off. So we'll take some 
chunky sized ones, maybe like four of them. Uh, I think we made it purple, didn't we? Bunch of machines, it was a darker color than that. So we'll do that, and then we'll just quickly have a look at the just shore machines. And there's a couple of things I want to do. First of all, when you get to school lane, um, you could, you might as well wait. There's no point actually going anywhere unless you've got stuff. Um, and the other thing is I'm going to make sure the vehicles are on a higher maintenance cycle because we're going to be running all the way through here. Um, that should hopefully see this factory allocate stuff to the shop. Beautiful. Now that that's one part of the jigsaw. Um, the other way to look at this is, is there a way that we can feed machines into our existing network? In other words, obviously Ludger Shawl is, you know, demanding, what, 341. That's not a lot of demand for machines. Obviously, it will grow, but in order for it to grow, it will need to build. And that's not a huge demand. It's, it's going to stop this from leveling up. Um, is there a way that we can bring machines into our existing network? We know there's a machine factory down here. Uh, he's working flat out pretty much. Um, Biggles Wade has a very healthy demand for machines. Worthing also has a pretty healthy demand for machines. The network for that, I think, is supplied from here. Consumers are Biggles, Wade, and Worthing. So, if we can actually get machines here, we will drop into the existing network for Biggles, Wade, and all things being equal, we assume that stop is in a good place, which it definitely isn't, just looking at this. We said the city has expanded. I think that's the machine drop bar. We actually want the machine drop probably to be out here a little bit now, um, because the city's grown. I think it was you know, only going up to about here initially, and now it's all the way out there. So maybe a better catchment might be somewhere around, say, here. And so instead of, where's the thing for this? Goods. Is that definitely, oh, it's Grange Road, it's steel. We're not dropping steel there. It's not steel, is it? Why did I call that steel? It's Biggles Wade Machines. Picks up machines from here, I'm pretty certain it does. Definitely doesn't take steel straight into town. Uh, so that was a dumb name. Now, if we change Grange Road and we say instead go here, then remove Grange Road, what does that look like as a, as a pathway? It's going to drive... Let's see, let's just change that colour slightly. There you go. It's going to go all the way through here, which is fine apart from this. It's going to get stuck behind the, uh, the trams there, which is not ideal. Um... This way around here takes you through the residential bit, but it's actually a much more available road and avoids the whole city centre gridlock. So what it, we might be better doing is sticking some waypoints down. That. And then on your way to the street, go that way. And then on your way back, go that way and then get rid of that other waypoint. Uh, that is, of course, shortcutting through here because that's what the game does best. Which means we then need to hop on to the next waypoint. Oh dear god, what did that do? Um, Great Queen Street should have gone to here first. There we go. Right, that's better. Yeah. It's a longer journey, but it should serve it much better. Worthing Steel. Eagles Wave Machines. Yeah, there's more than enough there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace them with the newer ones and then make sure they're on a higher maintenance cycle. Because, like I said earlier, they are going into town. And these things here, they can be replaced with the bigger ones as well. Just to make sure we've got the throughput. So that takes care of the Biggles Wave drop. Um, and I think can't remember how the machines go onwards over there. How does it get from there to here? I've forgotten how it does that. I 
a big old spider. Oh, it brings him to here and goes on a train. I remember. Um, yeah, so what we need to do is get machines to here from from here. We have a, a line that, that runs through there already, which is this one. And that takes planks. So it can't carry machines because machines need to go in a boxcar. Now, what we could do is stick a dedicated shuttle between there and there. And we could do it either by train, or we could even ship it down there. We could stick a port here and just drop machines from here directly there. And that will provide it with, um, you know, more demand. So I think I'll do that. That seems like a better option uh, than, than jumping onto the existing train line. It's already quite busy. And I'm not sure we've got enough platforms and have to jig everything around and I think a ship is a good option anyway so I'll do that well you can see that the network is now working we have all planks machines you probably just saw it then there was all planks and machines all three are available on that shipping run so it is definitely moving everything around the network uh, additionally we now have uh, these things here not that one that's the Worthing Coal uh, what the color are they blue ones these guys aren't they Biggles Wade machines. These these guys are turning up. They're just about starting to pick up machines here. And they're going to move them down to um, Biggles Wade down here. Drop them into existing network. You can see we've got a, uh, a ship here. Bizarrely enough, and this is where it really gets interesting, this factory is now allocating machines to go back. So as well as this machine factory here, moving machines to Biggles Wade, this factory is also going to send machines back that way to then send onward down to Ludgersol. And what's going to happen is, because we've got a link, effectively a, machine, a link between this machine factory and this machine factory, we've got a shuttle link between the two. They're going to also balance. They're going to kind of balance the things. Sometimes the machines flow in that way, sometimes that way, depending on where the demand is. Um, but the ultimate thing is that we are now starting to move machines down the line to Ludgershaw, which has now received its first two machines. Um, it's now just a matter of waiting and letting the network grow uh, and making sure that we keep up with the demand. You can see this is starting to kick off. More importantly, uh, this factory here, sorry, this steel factory is now starting to kick off. It's going to power level up. It already has these three consumers. Mitchell Dean's getting most of the stuff right now. Um, but, you know, Hyde will, will kick off. This will start to level up at some point once this gets complete here. This will then put more steel in. The network will flow. Um, so what we've seen today is a, well, not only our final delivery, if you like, to, to the cities. They're all getting everything now. But we've also seen a lot of multi-hop stuff going on. You know, where we're moving all across the network by ship, then by truck, then by train, then to ship again. And then the reverse is then happening. The same network is bringing the machines back across the train to here and then truck them into the destination. So it's a true multi-hop network. And also we're starting to see balancing as we're now sending machines, uh, not just to our original destination of Ludgershaw, but we're now sending them to Biggles Wade and Worthing. Things are flowing across the network that way. Uh, so all very cool stuff. Uh, in the next video, I think what we'll do, because we're on, I think this is episode 38, I guess. Uh, 39, we'll probably just polish some of it. We'll probably sort out that PAX run. Uh, and then I think 40 is probably going to be the end point. I would like to know from you guys, since you're still here watching, so obviously you're really enjoying the series. I would like to know from you guys, um, where do you want? Where do you think we should put the headquarters? And do you want a copy of the save file at the end of all this so that you can go and play with it yourself? Leave the comments in the description. I will read them. Let me know. Hope you're enjoying the series. But give me a thumbs up if you do. And don't forget to share with your friends. And thank you so much for uh, following the channel and supporting the videos, etc., etc. Have a great day, guys. If I don't speak to you before, have a very Merry Christmas. Take it easy, guys. Bye for now.